Hi, welcome back to Mrs. Ogram's Maths. We are carrying on with time series and this video is about doing some forecasting. Now we're going to hop on over to NZ Grapher and I've preloaded in the penguin data that is in here um, under the data set here for time series um, called penguins. And this is looking at the penguin population on um, an island, which I forget where it comes from, but you can look up the details of that data set in NZ Grapher. Anyway, so we've got these um, penguins in this particular penguin colony and it's uh, charting the number of penguins that were in that colony over time. So we have our long term trend running along here um, as the blue line, that's our uh, moving average. We have the raw data is the black line underneath, the green is the trend plus the seasonal. So the green is what we expect to happen from the long term trend um, and then adding on the seasonal effects under here. This part of the graph is those um, average seasonal effects and then down here we have the residuals. So all of those you should have um, learned how to talk through already and this uh, video is going to look at how to use this information and make a forecast of what we think would happen next. So we could do it to um, say forecast what do we think is going to happen within the next year so in this case it would be for um, the year 2008. So down here in our options for time series we have one for forecasts. Now here we've got the um, the trend coming up to this endpoint of our data and what we think would have happened from the long term trend plus the seasonal effects. And then we have this forecast in the red here, which as we get further away from the data, the, the region we're being given gets wider because we're less confident in that because we're further away from the actual data that we've got. Now the red line is the actual prediction and the shading around it is the 95% confidence interval. So the first thing I'm doing here is to come back to our page where we're going to put all this information together and copy that graph in. Now if we go back to the um, NZ Graph page, we can actually click on this button here and we get the forecast output. So this gives us the actual numbers that we're making that graph. So this is the, the minimum is the bottom of that red shaded line. The maximum is the top of the red shaded um, area. And the prediction itself is the exact point of that red line. Now you might not need to go through all of the table. In fact, when you're making a forecast, you probably only need the first bit. So I'm going to take that and, and put it with our graph, just the first little section. So here we have our table of values next to the graph and we can start writing some sentences about it now. So with our penguin population, I've copied across the next six months worth of data just here. And we're going to turn that into um, a sentence that we could write about it. Maybe we'll, we want to predict what's going to happen in six months time. So we are predicting for 2007 month six. So we can make this prediction that there will be 110 penguins. Now you need to round sensibly according to the context of what you're talking about. Of course we can't have 0.57 of a penguin um, that's represented here. So we need to round that sensibly. We're going to go to the nearest whole number of penguins. We also need to include our 95% confidence interval here. Our confidence interval um, actually gives us a prediction running from minus 77 to 294. Now clearly we can't have a minus number of penguins, so we need to interpret that in context, put it into a sensible sentence. So for this one, this means that we can be confident that the, the number of penguins in the colony will be between 0 and 294 in June 2007. Now that one was a little bit unusual because that minus number in there, so I'm just going to give you a second example now. So if we predicted for um, the month before, the fifth month, so that would be May. So looking at May's line here, we would make a prediction of there being um, 565 penguins. The 95% confidence interval for this prediction is from 402 um, up until 730. This means that we can be confident that the number of penguins in the colony will be between 402 and 730 in May of 2007. So there's another sort of a little bit more standard example. Now, of course, whenever you're using a model to predict something, you're never going to get it 100% right. So we also need to talk about the reliability 
of the forecasts that we're making. So the first thing is to go back and look at the graph and see just how well that data had fitted um, over the entirety of that um, data system. So we can take a look back at the um, recomposition graph and just look at the, the data that we were seeing. It does quite closely follow the, the um, black line. The actual data is coming out quite close to the green line of prediction. So we're quite um, confident in those forecasts. You can also do this by actually removing the last few points from our data. So if we take the last couple of points from um, this graph here, maybe we, we take out the whole of 2006, we pop it into the forecast and see what happens and how that compares to the real data. So let me show you how that's done. So start up here by downloading the data that you've got or go back to the original data file that you took your um, information from and load that up. Now we are going to take out the last year. Now I'm doing the whole year because um, in time series you should um, try to sort of stop at the end of a full cycle so that your predictions aren't um, put off by what was just happening right there in the middle of a cycle. So now we've got that data for um, all of that data except for that last year that was taken out. So I'm just going to copy that and then um, paste it into NZ Grapher here. So now we can import from the clipboard and we go through back to our forecasting and we've got the graph there that's the forecast and we've stopped it at 2006. Now we get our forecast for what happened in the year that we removed. So the data has been removed from the graph here we don't have 2006, we're predicting 2006 from what happened beforehand. If we take that data of that, those predictions, we can compare that to what really happened because we do have that data um, and see whether our model is a good predictor or not. So what we've got here is that um, we've got this um, table where we've put the confidence interval values on it from um, what we got from NZ Grapher, listed the actual value next to it, and then we look for did that actual value sit within the predicted range for it? And you can see that for each of these, they all have ended up with the confidence interval having accurately captured what really happened. So we can be quite confident about the use of our model. But your discussion doesn't need to end there because what you might want to do is take a look at um, the width of that confidence interval somewhere. So yes, the model was being accurate, but in some places you've got a really big gap between um, the bottom and top of your interval like this one here. We've got quite a significant gap between around 500 and 1000 penguins in the colony. That's more than that's a, it's more than double the, the top end is more than double the bottom end. Um, so you can talk about the forecast being reliable, but not especially useful at that stage because the variation within that confidence interval is um, quite large.